I, I remember arriving here at Luckington, Luckington Court and uh, being absolutely petrified. I think the unit had been filming for about 10 days, so there was already a, a sense of camaraderie. And when you first walk into that as a, the new girl, um, it's, it's very frightening. Um, and I was just so terrified that I would do something wrong or make a mistake or, you know. So I think I spent that entire first scene, which was in the hallway of Luckington Court with, I think, Susanna Harker and Polly Mabley. Um, I, I think I must have looked like a rabbit in headlights, to be honest. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. I hope that's not why they cut it. Susanna Harker, who played uh, Jane Bennett, had uh, was much more experienced than me, done a lot more than me. <laughs> I, I think when she first saw who was playing Mr Bingley, she was a little bit shocked that this unknown actor was going to be the love of her life. The makeup designer researched the period very well, and um, at the time they, they, they did wear some makeup occasionally, but that was usually when they were going out to a ball or a, you know, a, a big occasion. And that would usually be just a little rouge and maybe something on the lips. But generally, the women were, were very much you know, natural, they let their natural beauty shine through. Aye, aye, they have arms and legs enough between them. She is tolerable, I suppose. But she's not handsome enough to tempt me. And when Mrs. Bennett went to a ball, say Netherfield Hall, she would then get the rouge out and, and you know, probably you know, put too much on then. But um, but I couldn't wear any mascara. That was quite tough. The, the makeup department gave me absolutely no makeup whatsoever. I used to go into the makeup van every morning and uh, just sort of sit there while the rest of my sisters were beautified around me, and I just was made to have greasy hair and a sort of whiff of powder was sort of thrown across my face, <laughs> and then I was thrown out. <laughs> but I, I loved playing her so much, I, I really didn't mind. Caroline, our wig lady, had got me a pair of mutton chops, you see, and I put them on, and they were just vast and ridiculous, swamping my face, you see. And I'd gotten quite a panic about this, you see. Uh, everybody else was having their hair done, and I was stuck with these mutton chops trying to do something with them. And eventually, you know, I screamed out and said, look, they're no good, they're too big, they're too big. And she came along, and she was so skilled. <laughs> she just went snip, 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 and put them on, and they were perfect. It's, it's not half the battle, but it certainly helps that you can, that makeup and wardrobe will put you through the, the various things at 6, 6, 6, 37 in the morning. So in Wickham's case, sideburns, hair teased into place. And then into these fantastically expensive costumes that were, I think, handmade in Italy. And it does give you a kind of, you know, the boots and the tight breeches. <laughs> it's, it's quite a nice, you know, it's fun. And, uh, and that does go halfway to creating... Um, you can't slouch in those costumes, for instance, you can't. And, and you've got to wear them with a certain amount of dignity because otherwise you look crap, you know. Uh, the director, Simon Langton, at one point uh, I walked onto set in a particular dress which was a, a sort of red tartan type pattern and he just looked at me and he said, you look like a formica table. <laughs> and, and I went, oh, I, I, quite, I quite like this dress. <laughs> um, and so that's, I, that dress was then known as the formica dress. Um, and uh, I loved my costumes. Again, they were very plain. Uh, they were the, the plainest of all the Bennett girls. But they were so right for the character that it just enabled me as the actor to feel that I was Mary Bennett. Well, we were f um, filming, I remember, in the, the hall of the, of the Bennett's house. And uh, it was it was wonderful because we had these huge fires burning. There was a, there was an enormous fireplace, I remember, and um, every room in the house had these enormous fires. Well, of course, fires have to be controlled. So there's a guy comes along, and his job is to do all the fires, and 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 they're all sort of gas, so that we can cut a scene, and the heat can be taken down, and the flames can come up again. And so we were filming all day with this chap, and I was chatting to him various times, and. That evening we had a, a wonderful party and uh, it was outside and there were drinks and things and uh, we, we played bool and there were various bool courts or whatever you call them and we were put into teams and I was partnered with this guy that had been working on the fires all day. So we started to play and I got very involved in this and we had a, you know, a fun evening and that was that. So next morning I'm back as Mrs. Bennett again and on the set 
and this chap comes in to do the fires and then I said, oh, you know, hi. I said, it was a good party last night, wasn't it? And he said, yeah, it was, it was really nice. And I said, um, yeah, I said, the, the ball was good fun, wasn't it? He said, well, it was, but oh, I got stuck with this woman. And she took it so seriously. She kept saying, OK, this time we're going to win. This time we're going to win. And because it was me. He didn't know that I was the woman because he'd only ever seen me in costume. Oh, and now he's meddling with our dearest girl. And one of the things that I found surprisingly easy, actually, was the dialogue. Uh, Andrew Davis wrote this fantastically speakable adaptation. Um, and it was full of, uh, full of modern vulgarisms. Darcy was described several times as looking as though someone had farted. The thing about Jane Austen is she writes extremely well, and as anyone will tell you, if dialogue was, is well written, it's easy to say because it's true and it means something and it's right for that character. The problems actors face normally is having to deal with woeful dialogue and trying to make it sound believable. This was not hard to make sound believable. I, well, I, I, should I say that? Perhaps, perhaps my performance was appallingly badly structured and untrue, but I hope not. There's always a problem in the show, like Pride and Prejudice, of how, how much you play it down and naturalise it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the part is there on the page, really, and all you have to do is the actress to serve um, the dialogue that's been written for you. However, a lot of the actors found it very, very difficult to, um, to learn. Uh, some of them, Alison, for instance, and uh, Julia Sawala and uh, Jennifer Ely, all said that they found it sometimes that it was more difficult than learning Shakespeare, um, which puzzled me. But then I realised when you actually look at Jane Austen's dialogue, she does it so, I mean, try not to be too technical about it, she puts the power of the sentence at the end of the sentence. So you work your way through a clause or two and finish with the, the powerful verb usually at the end, which gives it this life and kick about it. Your mother will never see you again if you do not marry Mr. Collins. And uh, I will never see you again if you do. Oh, Mr. Bennett! At first, the first couple of weeks, I found the language quite difficult, the phrasing, and also because when we were filming, we had to be exact. If, if um, the script was actually quoting Jane Austen, absolutely, uh, if it was reported from the book, we couldn't be wrong with a the or an a or a but, it had to be. And some scenes were very, very difficult. And Mrs. Bennet is one of those women that she does rabbit on. You know, she, she uses 10 sentences when she could use one. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> oh, girls, girls, is he not a good father? Yeah. And never to tell us what a good joke. <laughs> oh, and now you shall all dance with Mr Bingley. <laughs> I used to finish a scene and i think, great, I've done that, brilliant. And then continuity would come over and say, I'm really sorry, but you said this instead of that or something. And, ah, uh, God, no. And Simon Langton, our lovely director, would say, I'm really sorry, Alison, awesome, but we'll have to go again. And, oh, right, OK. But they were that um, keen on everything being 100% accurate. Our life holds few distinctions, Mrs. Bennett, but I think we may safely boast that here sit two of the silliest girls in the country. Jane Austen's dialogue is quite hard in terms of the grammar that she uses, is often almost topsy-turvy in comparison to how we speak. However, I didn't really have that much to say in Pride and Prejudice. Um, I, I, you know, I just sort of sat doing embroidery and looking miserable a lot of the time. Um, and I think also it did help that I've done a lot of Shakespeare. Um, and I think if you're sort of classically, if you have classical experience, then it's not nearly as, as difficult. I believe the rewards of observation and reflection are much greater. And so they are when their mother is to be had. We shall have to be philosophers, Mary. But this dialogue is quite formal a lot of the time. I think at the heart of it, as long as you have Elizabeth, who is functioning on a slightly more pliable and natural level than everybody else, and I think she does that brilliantly, Jennifer, then the, the rest of the cast can do their thing. She's the kind of, she is the heart of it. She's the pulse for the audience. 
and surrounded by this kind of mini circus of, of people.